generally we design the structures for gravity load as well as lateral loads when we consider the lateral load the seismic forces are very important in structures since the seismic forces are depends on the ground movement the impact of the earthquake forces will be more when the building is subjected to earthquake loads in india we have four seismic zones as per is 1893 2016 This is the code which we have to follow for the earthquake resistant structures. So while designing the building for earthquake forces we need to consider the location of the building and then we need to follow the specifications which is given in IS 1893 2016. There are different types of seismic analysis are available which is given in the code. Now the question is what type of analysis we have to use for particular type of building we have g plus 1 g plus 2 g plus 5 g plus 10 and so on now many of us get confused for g plus 2 building what type of analysis we have to use and for g plus 10 building what type of analysis we have to use hey friends welcome back to civil engineering mastery in this video let's discuss about earthquake loads and its different types of analysis as per is 1893 2016 In addition to that let's discuss where the earthquake loads are applied in the structures and how it is differing from the gravity loads so without further delay let's begin now first let's start off with what is earthquake load earthquake load is the dynamic load which creates the vibrations of the structure due to the ground movement we'll get the vibrations in the structure next let's look into the types of earthquake analysis as per is 1893 2016 we have two types of analysis method first one is the static analysis and then we have the dynamic analysis in static analysis we have the equivalent static method and then in dynamic analysis we have response spectrum method and time history method so these two are the main types of earthquake analysis which we have to use in the design of the buildings one is static analysis another one is dynamic analysis in static analysis mainly we follow equivalent static method whereas in dynamic analysis we have two different methods one is response spectrum method and time history method as per is 1893 2016 class number 7.7 represents the dynamic analysis method in which it is given as linear dynamic analysis shall be performed to obtain design lateral forces shear and its distribution to different levels along the height of the building and to various lateral load for all buildings this you have to note over here for all buildings we have to use the dynamic analysis for all other buildings other than regular buildings lower than 15 meter in seismic zone 2 so this is the condition which we have to use to differentiate what type of analysis we have to use for what type of building as we have seen before we have the static analysis so for static analysis regular buildings up to 15 meter height and seismic zone 2 so this is the condition because it is clearly mentioned here for all other buildings that means the buildings of height more than 15 meter and seismic zones 3 to 5 we had to go with the dynamic analysis method whereas if the building height is less than 15 meter and if the building is located in seismic zone 2 we can go with the static analysis method when it comes to dynamic analysis the condition is the building height needs to be more than 15 meter and it should be located in seismic zone 3 to 5 the analytical model for dynamic analysis of building with unusual configuration should be such that it adequately represents irregularities present in the building configuration it may be performed either by the time history method or response spectrum method which we have discussed in the beginning in the dynamic analysis we have two different methods of analysis one is response spectrum another one is time history time being we are not going in depth with this method of analysis just we need to know what are all the types of analysis are there in the seismic design in static analysis we have equal static method and in dynamic analysis we have the response spectrum method and time history method static analysis needs to be used when we have the building height up to 15 meter and if the building is located in seismic zone 
we have to use the dynamic analysis if the building height is more than 15 meter and if the building is located in seismic zone 3 to 5. Simply we can say all other buildings other than 15 meter height and zone 2. Now we know where we have to use static analysis and where we have to use dynamic analysis. Now the question is what we are going to find out from this analysis. When you consider the gravity loads due to the application of external loads there will be some internal forces developed in the structure. So we are going to find out the internal forces and then we have to provide the proper size of the structural members in order to resist the internal forces developed due to the externally applied load. So this is the major concept when you consider the gravity load. In case of earthquake load, what we are going to find out, whether we are going to find out the loads or forces or movement or vibrations because earthquakes are mainly developed due to the ground movement and it creates the vibrations of the structure. So what we are going to find out from the earthquake analysis the answer is we are going to find out loads or forces so we are going to find out the loads or forces which are acting on the structure and then we are going to design the structure for the loads or forces which are acting on it so that the structure will able to withstand those loads and forces without any damage to the structure now let's see where these earthquake loads are acting on the structure when you consider the gravity load the gravity load will be of dead load plus live load. So the self weight of the structure and the live load will act together as a gravity load which is in the vertical direction. When it comes to earthquake load, due to the ground movement, the structure start to vibrate. And whether the earthquake loads will be acting on the column or beam or slab or joints. So that is the question now. The seismic loads will be acting on the joints so wherever we have the joints in the structure the seismic loads will be acting over there on the joints because earthquake load is a indirect load due to the ground movement or vibrations of the structure so due to the ground movement the structure start to move and we will get the movement in the joints as well but due to the stiffness and rigidity of the joint or structure the structure will try to retain its original shape but in some cases the indirect load that is the seismic load will come into play where we have the joints which are more vulnerable to movement that means the stiffness and rigidity of the joint will be less in that case the joints will tend to move and that creates the damage to the structure so now we have a clear idea about where the earthquake loads are applied on the structure now let's discuss in which direction these earthquake forces are applied on the structure generally due to the ground movement the structure tend to move in the horizontal plane when you take the directions x y and z so among these three directions the earthquake forces will be dominant in the horizontal plane only that is in the x direction and the z direction this is the global coordinate, this is your x, this is your y and this is the z direction. So these two directions are the dominant one when it comes to the earthquake load. Because if the structure moves in the y direction, that is in the upward direction, there are loads which are available in the downward direction. Because due to the ground movement, if the structure tend to move in the upward direction, we have the loads in the downward direction. So this will counteract and so this will not be the dominant direction. Mainly this X and Z direction will be the dominant direction when it comes to the earthquake load. So always horizontal plane is the dominant direction when it comes to earthquake load. So friends, let's end up this video here. I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. If you really like the content, do hit the like button and also share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.